pretty much nowhere. How, how were you seen? How were you discovered? Did you, were you surprised? Um, see, when I hear people say nowhere, the chip stays on the shoulder. It and the chip stays on the shoulder. And, um, you know, Fort Valley State College is a historically black college and university. And um, when someone says nowhere, I have to go back and go, hmm, Walter Payton, Jerry Rice. Oh, let's stop. Let's go back to Pittsburgh. Let's go L.C. Greenwood. Let's go Mel Blunt. Let's go John Starward. Let's go all, not just black college players, but Hall of Famers. So when I hear that, it, it, it leaves a, you know, a thing going in. When I'm coming in to play and you have players going, where's Fort Valley? What is that? Uh, military school? So, you know, it's like you're forever having to prove yourself. And it's like, why? You know, we're all in the same room. We're all getting the same kind of tape, got the same kind of gear on. But I'm different. And my thing was, so in order for me to play in this league and to, you know, to prove that I'm, I've already been drafted, but to prove that I'm worthy in this league, I have to do something that nobody else can do. I have to do this every day. And I think, you know, John said something last night that I just, that resonated with me. Every day in practice was a game. And you had to play that way. You had to play at 100 miles an hour every day so that you got the reputation when somebody lined up over you, they go, you line up over him, you might want to fasten your chin strap. And when you do that, you got a surrounding cast with you. If you're going 100 miles an hour and everybody else is going 20, it's kind of like they either got to pick the game up or they're going to get run over. So that's the deal. And it's like, it's not something that happens one game, one day, one season. It's something that you, you play that way your entire season. Do you have to prove? I don't have to prove anything to anybody. You know, I'm out here where everybody else is. But, you know, because of what people think, and people think that my college is, if I was playing at UGA or Pitt, I may be playing third string, kind of insulting. But it's like, keep watching, you know. So I took that. I took it personally. And that's how I played. And it's like you go from that to being captain to being all the other accolades that came after that. And it's like it, it, it doesn't matter, you know. In my in my opinion, it doesn't matter. But um, I I looked, I, you know, when people said I, I took it the way I took it, but I I I, I, um, I enjoyed the ride, and uh, I enjoyed you know being around these guys and um, you know doing the things that we did. Great. You look at the other names and other people that are in the hall. What, what is in this hall of honor? What does it mean to you to be included with that group? Um, you know, when when you talk about a hall of honor, you know, if the hall of honor was here before the hall of fame, then you kind of go wow. But you know, hall of fame guys, obviously, you know, they should be in the hall of honor. Then you go, where do you fall? I didn't, I didn't give it a thought, actually. When I got the call, I think when, when, when I, I wasn't like, yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't disrespectful, you know, to Art, Art when he called me. But I, I kind of was funny because, you know, the young lady says, uh, Greg Lloyd, Art Rooney, you know, wants to kind of like getting, you know, wants to speak with you. And it's kind of like getting the call at the end of school to go see the principal. And it's like, okay, well, what did I do? You know, I, I, I watch very little football because it's not what we used to do. And um, so, I, somehow, you know, he came on the phone. He said, "Hey, Greg, this is Art," and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of disciplined. So I said, oh, "Sir," and he says to me, you know, you know, congratulations for being inducted into, you know, the Hall of Honor. And I was like, okay. It was like, okay. And then my next words was like, about time. <laughs> and so I think he, he kind of, you know, he kind of, you know, laughed a bit, and you know, and it went from there. But um, I mean, guys, there's, there's so much talent. That came through here, and oh, uh, and you know, there's some guys that probably should be in in this thing before me, in my opinion. And um, I'm I'm honored, you know, I'm honored to go in with one of my, you know, one of my buddies, uh, you know, Carnell. I'm honored to, um, you know, like I said, I could have sat back and listened to John, you know, tell stories for the next 20 minutes, you know, and that's what I did when I came here as a young guy. You know, I, I, I John was my trainer. And, um, you know, I didn't like seeing him then because he had all this unorthodox stuff that he did. And uh, I, I hated Federal Street because he ran it all the time. 
But, um, you know, it was, you know, people like John, people like Mel, people like Donnie and Stahl and those guys. You know, you watch how they practice. You watch how they carry themselves on and off the field. And that's what you wanted. But you knew that those guys were Hall of Fame. They had not just Hall of Fame, Hall of Honor, but they had that Hall of Fame character. And I think that's what the Steelers have always been about. You know, the organization from the time I got here as a, as a rookie, I was hurt my very first year. So I think maybe the second play in training camp. I had surgery over at, used to be at Divine Providence Hospital. The first person I saw when I woke up was the chief. And it's like, does the chief really know me? And he came in, called my name, and said I was going to be OK. And it was, you know, it was, it was kind of cool. It was really kind of cool, you know. But the organization has always been like that. They've always been classy. And they've always bought in people of character. And when their character is not there, you know, they kind of, you know, separate themselves from it. So that's one of the things I've always enjoyed, you know, about being. So there, there are so many guys that I'm pretty sure eventually will get in this. But the guys that they've put in there now, I think they've, they've hit it right on the head. So I'm just honored, you know, to be considered, you know, one of those guys and to be in a class of guys that are, are, are very, you know, you know, guys that are just ridiculous class. So, you know, for that, I, I'm grateful. You guys came so close in the 90s. Have you gotten over it? Do you have any regrets? Uh, um, you know, th there are no regrets because, you know, when I, when I got here, the team wasn't very good. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure we, we had some good players, you know, you know, great coach, but the team wasn't very good. I mean, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't know about losing. You know, I didn't come from a place where, you know, you, you, you lost. And uh, the Steelers were like 5 and 11, 6 and 10 and things of that nature. And so we were that we were that group of guys that, that got drafted and started playing, and we made missed an AFC Championship game, but we got the Steelers back on track to being recognized as a championship team, a team in the playoff, a team that can win a Super Bowl. Even though you know in you know Super Bowl 30 we lost, but we had already put the work in. And then, like you say, you know, players. Over a certain period of time, you know, you can't play for so long. But the pieces of the puzzles kept, you know, they kept putting the pieces together. And 10 years after we, you know, did the one that we did, you know, Pittsburgh put it together and they won. So for that, I'm grateful. You never want to be, you know, you know, grateful for losing, you know, anything. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was, for a long time, I kind of regretted the fact that we couldn't, we weren't the guys that could bring that number five in. But you know, to have something to do with it, to have you know, to help usher it in, you know, it was it was kind of cool in knowing that. Okay. You know, talk about um, you, you mentioned HBCU football and the essence of what comes from that. Of course, Bill Nunn here in yes. Pittsburgh, yes. Um, one of the um, most recognized and noted uh, recruiters. Can you just talk about that spirit that you had and so many others had coming from an HBCU going to the National Football League? You mentioned that chip on your shoulder. Well, you know, you know I think, again, you know, to know that you're, you're capable is one thing, and then for, to have to prove it is, you know, is, is another. I mean, you know, when we were playing football in college, going into the NFL wasn't a, you know, wasn't a thing. You know, I, I know now, you know, People go out and they see guys and they, like you said, I think you talk about a combine. People go to a combine and how high somebody jumps and how fast they run. And it's like, oh, he's a first round draft choice. But something they don't measure is this. And where I came from, you know, if I can take your heart, I can make you quit football. And when I came here, that was my thing. You know, it's like my teammates, they'll tell you, even in practice. If you line up with me and you talking about your first round draft choice, you better play like first round draft choice because I'm trying to make you quit. And people go, well, Greg, that's that's your teammate. Well, we better find out now than find out on Sunday, you know. And then now somebody's upset because this guy is garbage, and that's not my problem. You drafted him, I didn't, and I'm just glad that we call, got a chance to call him out before he got out there and hurt us in the game. That's how we practice when we when we was in college. It's something that, that's instilled in you. It's a pride that's instilled in you. And the last thing you want to be is you don't want to be the guy that plays on a national football team and you're the guy that's causing them to lose. You're the guy that's, you know, not doing your job. You want to be the guy that set the standard. And I would like to think while I was here, I set the standard. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't matter. 
I don't think it matters. I think, you know, talent is talent. And, you know, if you can go out and you can find it, it can be in, you know, one of the things I loved about Coach No. Coach No did not care if you went to the community college or wherever. If you can play, he's going to line you up on Sunday and play. And I love that about him. And he gave me the opportunity, you know, to show that, showcase that talent. And, you know, the rest is the rest is history. Great guy. Bill Nunn, Bill, Bill Nunn, great guy. Been in the Hall of Fame this year and inducted. I think, you know, Bill Nunn was probably, you know, one of, you know, if not the guy that, you know, was really, really instrumental in, in getting black college football, you know, into the, into the um, you know, into the NFL. So, you know, shame that we didn't have one player drafted last year at HBCU, right? Won't happen again. <laughs>